فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We've previously spoken about um, uh, Asbab al-Ghulu We spoke about Asbab al-Ghulu The root causes for extremism Inshallah ta'ala We are now going to move on to the fourth chapter Which is Madahir al-Ghulu the manifestations of extremism. What ways and forms does extremism occur? So that is inshallah ta'ala what I'm going to be speaking about in today's part bi idhnillahi al kareem The first one inshallah ta'ala is al ghulu fi salihin al ghulu fi salihin Extremism in exaggeration towards the righteous people or extremism in negligence towards the righteous people. And Alama Abdul Rahman Yahya al Mu'allimiyu he said in his Kitab at Tankil, Bima fi ta'nib al Kawthariyu min al Abatil, he says, Bin awsa'i awdiyat al Batili. One of the greatest valleys of falsehood and misguidance is going extreme in the righteous people. A lot of people, what do they do? They go extreme in exaggeration towards the righteous people. And another group of people, they go what? They go extreme in negligence towards the righteous people. That they neglect the rights that Allah has given the scholars, so they slander them. And as Ibn Asakir rahimahullah mentions, Luhumul ulama masmuma, wa adatullahi fi hatki astani muntaqisihi ma'luma. That the flesh of the righteous people is poisonous. The scholars, their flesh is poisonous. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's norms is that anyone who opens his tongue towards the scholars and the people of knowledge and speaks against them and in, by slandering them from what Allah Taala's way is that Allah kills his heart before he brings him death that that person doesn't last long a lot of those people they apostate they become innovators themselves because the flesh of the righteous people and the scholars is poisonous. And there's another group of people, what they do is that they go overboard in exaggeration towards the righteous people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, وَقَالُوا لَا تَذَرُنَّ آلِهَتَكُمْ وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ وَدًّا وَلَا سُوَاعًا وَلَا يَغُوثَ وَيَعُوقَ وَنَسْرًا وَقَدْ أَضَلُّوا كَثِيرًا وَلَا تَجِدِ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا ضَلَالًا Allah tells us in this verse, Five righteous people. Waddan, wala suwa'an, wala yaghutha, wa ya'uqa, wa nasra. Five righteous people. All five righteous people, the people of Nabiullah Nuh, they worship these five righteous men. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala, and huma, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, he states and he mentions, that these five were five righteous men. As it's narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al that he said, Asma'u rijalin salihin. These were five righteous men's name. Min qawmi Nuh, from the people of Nabiullah Nuh. Falamma halaku awha shaytanu ila qawmihim. When these five died, these five righteous men died, shaytan sent revelation to the people. He started to whisper to the people. And what he said to the people is, 
أن ينصبوا إلى مجالسهم التي كانوا يجلسون أنصابا He said place pictures and images of theirs in the gatherings which you guys sit in So that's, that's what they did they, they, they made statues and pictures of them and placed it inside their gatherings just so they can remember that's what the first generation did so when these ones went away The generation who came after, they fell into worshipping them. And if you look at the statement that Ibn Abbas used, is very powerful. He said, falam tu'bad. The ones who made the images and the pictures, they didn't worship them. They just put it, put it there just to remember. Hatta ida halaka ulaika. But when those one died, when the ones who made the image their intention was what? Just to remember these righteous people and not to be forgotten. But they died. Look what he said after that. وَنَسَخَ الْعِلْمُ And knowledge, part, it went. Ilm went. that they got worshipped, these five men. So the shaitan starts off very small. Allah tells us in the Quran, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خطوات الشيطان. Don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. So what shaitan is going to do is that he's going to make you not fall into shirk, shirk straight away, but he will start off something very small. And as you go on and on and on, you will fall into shirk akbar. And that's where the ulama's existence is important because if they were there, these people would not have been worshipped. The ulama's job is to make sure that they're what? They're preventing and they're stopping the people from what? From not just shirk, but al shirk, the paths that will lead to shirk. They don't just stop shirk, but they, they, they make sure they stop the path that will lead to shirk. So the things that so what so that which we take from the hadith is these people, the reason why they fell into shirk akbar was because al-wulu fi salihin They became, they exaggerated. They went overboard beyond the proper limit. They went beyond the set limits by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, the righteous people, when it comes to going extravagant and extreme in exaggeration towards them, it happens in one of two ways. Pay attention to this. Going extreme in exaggeration towards the righteous people, it happens in one of two ways. The first one is al-mubalagha. To go extreme in what? To be excessive fi madhihim in their praise. When you're praising this righteous person, you become very excessive in your praise. As you see, a lot of the Rafidah, the way they do things, the Shia, and also the Sufiyyah, they go overboard and they exceed the limits that were set in praising this particular individual. And it's sad because you will tend to find, and this is a sad reality, this is a sad, a sad reality that you would find a people who would attribute to themselves Ahlul Sunnah and say that we are Salafis, we are Ahlul Hadith, we are Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Going extreme on scholars, an excessive, an exaggeration in them. For example, saying that our Sheikh has never done a mistake in Manhaj. That, that is Al Ghulu, that's extremism, and that is Mubalagha, that's excessiveness in the rights of this righteous person that you're speaking about. And this falls under the statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Imam Al-Bukhari narrated in his Sahih that the Prophet said, لا تطروني Don't become excessive in praising me, the Prophet said. كما أطرت النصارى Like the Christians. They became excessive in praising who? المسيح ibn Maryam. Nabiullah Isa, 
they became excessive in praising him. The messenger said, For verily I am a slave. Faqulu when you speak about me, say, Abdullahi Allah's slave. Wa Rasuluhu and Allah's messenger. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa here is telling the companions and he's teaching them, don't go excessive in praising me. Like the Christians became excessive in praising their prophet, Isa ibn Maryam. What is he referring to here? He's referring to the ayah, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ ibn Maryam. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ And also Allah says لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَةَ وَمَا مِنْ إِلَاهٍ إِلَّا إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٍ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَنْتَهُ عَمَّا يَقُولُونَ لَيَمَسَّنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ so they went overboard by saying Isa ibn Maryam is Allah. Or they went overboard by saying what? Isa ibn Maryam thalithu thalatha. He's one of three. So they went overboard by taking Isa from being who? A slave of Allah. By saying what? Who Allah? He is Ilah. And then Allah tells us after وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ Ya Bani Israel, a'budu Allah Rabbi wa Rabbakum. O people of Israel, the children of Israel, worship my Lord and your Lord. And then he went on to say, Innahu man yushrik billahi. Isa said this to them, Any one of you who associates partners with Allah, faqad harram Allahu alayhi al-jannah. Allah has made jannah haram onto them. Innahu man yushrik billahi, faqad harram Allahu alayhi al-jannah. وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ And the hellfire will be his final abode. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِنَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ And the oppressors and the transgressors, they don't have anyone giving them victory whatsoever. So here what we take from this is that our Prophet was making sure that we didn't fall into that as well. That we didn't also take him alayhi salatu wasalam out of the level of being a slave of Allah. That we remember he is a what? As he said, فَقُولُوا Say about me, Abdullahi, the slave of Allah, وَرَسُولُهُ and his, and his messenger. So he is a abdun, فَلَا يُعْبَدْ He's a slave, so he's not worshipped. وَرَسُولٌ and he's a messenger, فَلَا يُكَذَّبْ He's not disbelieved. وَلَكِنْ يُطَاعُوا وَيُتَّبَعْ Rather he is obeyed and he is followed. عليه الصلاة والسلام so we don't treat him like an ordinary slave of Allah. We know he's above any ordinary slave of Allah. He is a messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. So we give him that level. And we don't take him high up that he becomes what? That he becomes a ilah. So he's a level between an ordinary slave and a level below than being a, a Allah Taala or having divinity. So that shows us what those who come and say, those who come and say that Nabiullah Muhammad, as much as you praise him, you haven't really given him his rights in praise. That is say what? That is false. That is nonsense. Our messenger is telling us, don't go overboard with me. So praising him can make you go overboard with him. You can actually take him out of, out of his Rome, alayhi salatu wasalam, and out of his level and the status that Allah has given him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another group of people, what do they do? They don't believe in him at all. They disbelieve him. They say he's not even a messenger. These are also falling into a ghulu, extremism. This extremism is called what? Extremism in negligence. They neglected his rights that Allah gave him subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's another form of extremism. Also, another narration that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day he was in a gathering and a, a woman said this was after the battle of Badr when he won so one woman stood up and she started to praise. So she said, وَفِينَا نَبِيٌّ And amongst us is a prophet يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي غَدٍ there is amongst us a prophet who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. 
And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her in response to that statement that she just said, he said to her, Da'i hadha, leave off this you're saying. Waquli, but rather say, ma kunti taqulina, that which he was saying before. Before this praise, because she was saying a lot of stuff. Until she came to the statement which is what? Wafina nabiyun ya'lamu ma fi ghad. So the messenger said, go back to what you were saying before. Because what she was saying before was right. There was no exaggeration in it. As for this statement, he didn't like it. So he said to her, وَقُولِي مَا كُنْتِ تَقُولِينَ Say that which you were saying before. يَا لَا يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي غَدٍ إِلَّا اللَّهِ No one knows that which is going to happen tomorrow except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي غَدٍ إِلَّا اللَّهِ there is no one who knows what's going to happen in the future, in the unseen, except him subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is specific to him. Also, Mutarrif ibn Abdullah al-Shakhir, he narrated from his father, Abdullah ibn al-Shakhir, that he said, I went out with a delegation of the people of Bani Amir to the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Abdullah ibn Shakhir is saying this. فقالوا, the, 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 the delegation of Bani Amir, they said to the Prophet, Anta Sayyiduna, you are our master. Then the Messenger said to them, As Sayyidullah, the master is Allah. And then they said, Wa afdaluna fadla, you are the most virtuous one amongst us. Wa adamuna tawlan. So they're praising the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're the best amongst us and you're the greatest, alayhi salatu wasalam. Faqala, the Messenger said, Qulu biqawlikum, say your speech which you were saying. Wala yastajriyannakum ash-shaytanu. And do not let shaytan make you slip. Do not let shaytan make you go overboard. In another riwayah, narrated by Imam al-Nasa'iyu in his kitab, Amal al-Yawmi wal-Layla. And Imam al-Nasa'iyu add an, adds another wording which is, Wala uhibbu, and I do not love for you guys, an tarfa'uni, that you raise me above, fawqa manzilati allati anzalani allahu iyah, that you raise me over the station which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me. I do not like that and I do not love that. So as you can see, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was making sure that the speech that came out of the companion's mouth and when they said things, he made sure they didn't fall into Al-Ghulu, extremism in what? In exaggeration and also extremism in what? In negligence, that they didn't fall into any of those two. Also he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْغُلُوَّ Beware and stay away from extremism. فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمُ الْغُلُوَّ Because those who came before you, what destroyed them was extremism. That extremism is what? Extremism in exaggeration and also extremism in what? In negligence. So we have وَلِلْأَسَفِ الشَّدِيدِ People who don't take these prophetic statements and don't realize that by doing this, you can fall in, into extremism. And it's sad because today, if you look at the world country that we're living in in the UK, and even if you look at the world today, are the Sufiya considered from the Ghulat, the extremists? Do you hear them being attributed to them extremism? When in reality, they have these characteristics. No one looks them. So somehow, the only ones who are attributed to being extremists are who? The Wahhabis. Like in the extremists here, if you look at it, is what? Sufiya, they have ghulu fi salihin. Are you with me? This is madhar min madahir al ghulu. It's one madhar of the madahir there is when it comes to ghulu. The second one, that I mentioned, that I, I mentioned too, right? The second one is Tasweerul Awliya'i was Salihin. Pictures 
of the righteous people and the allies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pictures is why the people of Nuh, Nabi Allah Nuh alayhi salam, the reason why they worshipped their righteous people was because they took them and made statues and pictures of them. And that was a path that shaitan used for them. <clears throat> the second type of madahirul ghulu, the second type of madahirul ghulu is al ghulu fi takfir. Al ghulu, extremism in what? Fi takfir. And al takfir means what? It means to, to discommunicate an individual from Islam. It is to take somebody out of the fold of Islam. The way that al ghulu fi takfir happens is by three ways. al ghulu fi takfir happens in three ways. The first one is التكفير بما ليس كفرا Takfir in something that's not even kufr أصلاً. This thing is not kufr And a person comes and he makes takfir on a person regarding it Like المعاصي sins Drinking alcohol is a sin Taking mortgage and riba and etc. is all what? It's a sin. Committing zina is a sin. All of those are what? They are ma'asi, sins. Somebody comes and he makes you a kafir because of that. Are you with me? This is takfir bima laysa kufran. It is doing takfir on something that's not even kufr. The second one is التكفير فيما يحتمل كفرا is takfir placing kufr on someone based on something that can take kufr. Now this one's different. The first one wasn't even a kufr. This one is a possibility. It can. Sometimes it can be kufr. فيما يحتمل كفرا It can be. There's a possibility it can be kufr. And this is what takfir al hakim bi ma anzal Allah falls under this one. Placing kufr on the Muslim leader who rules by other than that which Allah has set down. Can he become a kafir from it? Naam. Are you with me? He can. There are times when he can become a kafir from it. And there are times when he won't be a kafir from it. Pay attention. Are, we all, are you with me, brothers? تكفير الحاكم بغير ما أنزل الله بإطلاق Anyone who makes a Muslim leader who rules by other than that which Allah has sent down He places kufr on him unrestrictedly This is something we spoke, we spoke about before, we mentioned it before This is madhab al-khawarij This is what? Madhab al-khawarij Ahl al-sunnah wal-jama'ah When it comes to hukum بغير ما أنزل الله They do not place kufr on it unrestrictedly they believe it requires tafsil. It depends on how he rules by other than Allah, by other than that which Allah has said down. Are you with me? So this is a takfiru bima yahtamilu kufran. Also, what falls under that one as well is a takfiru man lam yukafir al kafir bi zabihim. Another one is that I made this person a kafir. You are not following me in it. So you're a kafir as well. So then they use the qa'idah is مَنْ لَمْ يُكَفِّرِ الْكَافِرِ فَهُوَ كَافِرِ Anyone who doesn't make the kafir, doesn't place kufr on this kafir, he himself is a kafir. This is based on his claim that this person is a kafir. Are you there? Now, the, can this person become a kafir? There's an ihtimal, it's a possibility, it could be. And it also could be what? And it could also be not a kafir. So this is ihtimal, there's a possibility. But for them, it's unrestricted. If anybody ever says to them, so-and-so is a kafir, for them, automatically is a kafir. We believe that this is what? 
تكفير فيما يحتمل كفرا that's also الغلو في التكفير the third one is تكفير المعين دون اعتبار للضوابط الشرعية the third one is this thing is كفر this thing is actually كفر now so the first one was is not كفر the second one is a possibility 50-50 The third one on the other hand is, this is a kufr now. This thing is a kufr. But is this individual a kafir, specifically? So it's kufr min nahiyat al-itlaq. Unrestrictedly, generally, mutlaq al-hukum. The general ruling is that it's kufr. Such as the person who abandons the prayer. Uh, and etc. This thing now, we agreed, is kufr. We agreed, both of us. That is kufr, مثلا. Placing on this person requires an external, external other evidences. It requires, according to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, wujud al shurut wa intifa' al mawani'. The conditions have to be there, and the obstacles or the prevent the preventing factors have to be absent. And there are four things that have to be there in order for us to specifically place the takfir on this particular individual. The first one is al jahlu. We have to repel. ignorance from this person and even this issue of al-jahlu it requires it has in it al-ghulu al-ifrat wa-tafriyat extremism in exaggeration and extremism in negligence some people they entered al-udhru bil-jahli excuse of ignorance into this in dawabidu takfir to matiz sarahatan that this person is a kafir and he's still saying al-udhru bil-jahl al-udhru bil-jahl Another, another side like it, there's to him there's no such a thing as al-jahlu. He believes that the Prophet came, the Quran is calm, khalas, that's it. There's no al-udhru bil-jahli. Are you there? And I already spoke about this previously before. The second one is al-ikrah, duress. A person is being put into a state of karaha. This itself, this the definition of karaha has also have it has in it al-ifrat wa tafriyat. What is ikraha? What is the reality? Hakikatul ikrah. What does it mean? That needs for its to, itself to be understood. The third one is al khata mistake. This person did this, but they did it unintentionally. They did not intend to do this action. Pay attention to this. Again, this one itself has al-ifrat wa tafriyat in it. The issue of al-khata. Because some people will say to you, he didn't intend the kufr. No, we don't care about whether he intended the kufr or not. We're looking at whether he intended the action. So when we say that he did a mistake, it means he did a mistake by not intending the action, not he didn't intend the kufr. Qasdul fi'l is different from qasdul kufri. To say that he didn't intend the kufr, this is madhab al-irja, the murji'a. We look at, did he intend the action? Somebody stood on, stood on top of a mushaf, and he's standing, he's got a leg on the mushaf. And he's trying to, and he's using the mushaf to get onto something. To get something from a high, high place. So we tell him, okay, you're standing on a mushaf, and he looks and he says, Inna lillah, I didn't know, I thought it was a catalog. Bethalan. This is, al he did, we're going to say, al khata he done a mistake. His intention wasn't the, the action. But if he says, oh yeah, I'm, I know I'm standing on a mushaf. And then we say to you, but this action is kufr now. Tarattaba alayha kufr. Kufr came from this now. Are you there? Kufr comes from this now. He then says, well, I didn't know or I didn't intend the kufr. We we'll say to him, the intention of the kufr is different from the intent of the action. That needs to be understood. The fourth one is at ta'wil. Even this one has extremism in it. Extremism in exaggeration and also extremism in negligence. A ta'wil here is not every interpretation is a is a, a, a preventing preventing cause. I'm a prevention from al kufr al takfir al mu'ayyan, placing takfir on a specific person. Ta'wil is not all of them. It has to be a ta'wil which is sa'ir. Ta'wil which is what? Sa'ir, a ta'wil that is acceptable, considerable. So all four of those are dawabit shar'i that has to be observed. 
Are you with me? So let's go over that again. Extremism in a takfir happens from one of three. It happens in a takfiru bima laysa kufran. Something that's not kufr. Something that is not kufr. This person does takfir on it, like sins. Okay? The second one is a takfiru fi bayahtamilu kufran. Takfir on something that can take kufr. It has a possibility of taking it. This person comes and unrestrictedly makes takfir on people on it. And we mentioned Hukum Bhairi Ma Allah enters there. Because Hukum Bhairi Ma Allah has many suwar. And we mentioned that it is it's nine different forms that it comes in. Sahih? Nine different forms that it comes in. And also the issue of takfiru man lam yukafir il kafira. That the takfir of the person who doesn't make so and so a kafir is a kafir himself. That falls under the second one, which is a takfir fi ma yahtamil kufran. The third one is takfir al muayyari duna i'tibari li dawabid al shari'ah. Is placing. Now we've, you've, the action is kufr. But you're, you, just because the action is kufr, you're automatically trying to place that kufr on the dua without looking at the principles that the Sharia has placed. So just because there is an act of kufr done by a person, it doesn't mean automatically they become a kafir. There has to be observed mawabit shari'a, shurut, and the, the mali has to be absent. So the person has to, the four which we mentioned, al-jahlu wal-ikrahu wal khata wa ta'wil The opposite is what's needed for the takfir to happen, and these four have to be missing. Anyone who doesn't do that. So the first one was what? At takfiru bima laysa kufran. That which is a kufr, right? The second one is what? At takfiru fi ma yahtamilu kufran. Are you with me? And that, the second one you have to understand is it falls under the qawaid of the ulama who say idra'u al-hudud bil shubuhat. Because this is muhtamal now, it has a possibility. Can be kufr and it can't be kufr. The scholars, they have a qa'idah which is known as idra'ul hudud. Repel, repel, repel what? The capital punishments with doubts. Repel it with doubts. In other words, if there is a 99% that this person has fallen into kufr, but there's 1% that he hasn't, we will repel the 99% with that 1%. Also the qa'idah that the scholars they say Al-khata'u fil-afwi khayrun bin al-khata'i fil-uquba To do a mistake in forgiving is better in, in doing a mistake in punishing And inshallah ta'ala I'm going to bring some quotes for that The Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam he said in the hadith Al-Imam al-Bukhari wa al-Muslim both narrated in the sahih, in the sahih That the Prophet said Ayyum amri'in that the Prophet said, any individual who says to his brother, O oh, kafir, this kufr is going to go to one of you two. If it is as you said, you got it right, and this person is actually a kafir, then, then you are saved from it, and the kufr goes to that person you said it about. And if not, it comes back to you. So that kufr is going to go somewhere. It's either going to go to you or it's going to go to the person you're saying it about. So when you are using this word kafir to a person, do a tahari and do ta'anni. Take your time and observe. Look into the matter very deeply. Because once it comes out of your mouth, it's going to go to one of the, it's going to go one or two directions. It's either going to come your direction, or it's going to go to the person you said it about. And takfir aslan, to place takfir on somebody aslan, it is for ahlul ijtihad, people of ijtihad, the people who are able to look at the dawabid al-shari'a. Takfir is not for kulla man habba wa dab. And of course, from the Qawaid, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe is that takfir is not even for Ahlul Ijtihad in the sense what they can do takfir on who they want. They themselves have to get it from the Kitab and the Sunnah. Because the scholars they say, At takfiru haqqun lillahi wa li rasulihi. 
the takfir is only a right to Allah and his messenger only. This Muslim alim can only make takfir on a person based on Allah's speech and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sunnah. No other place. He can't just feel like it. He feels like it, that he wants to make takfir on somebody. He can't do that. So brothers, this issue of a takfir, there's ghulu in it, in exaggeration, and there's also ghulu in negligence. Ghulu in those who have fallen into madhabul khawarij, who go out and about and place takfir on everybody. Kafir, 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 kafir. And the murji'ah, who fall into the other extreme of negligence, which is that every single person, hatta man kaffarahu Allah wa rasooluh, somebody who Allah and his messenger have placed takfir on it. Wajtaba'at alayhi al-ummah, the ummah have unanimously agreed upon his kufr, they come and they, what do they do? They say that this person is still a believer. So we suffer from, and we see at this awilah, uh, this time that we're living in, extreme on both sides. ولذلك الشيخ عبد الله بن أبي بطين was from أئمة الدعوة النجدية he was from the Mufti of his time as it is in the book فتاوى أئمة النجدية the third volume page 336 عبد الله أبا بطين he says وقد استزل الشيطان أكثر الناس في هذه المسألة فقصر بطائفة فحكموا بإسلام من دلت نصوص الكتاب والسنة والإجماع على كفره he says that shaitan has made many people's legs slide and slip. Shaitan has made many people go wrong. في هذه المسألة in this matter, which مسألة? مسألة التكفير, the issue of labeling a person kafir. 